So we are continuing the commentary on the debate between uh, Sean Carroll and um, Eric Weinstein, uh, hosted by Piers Morgan. Um, the second topic which they discussed was uh, geometric unity, uh, Eric Weinstein uh, theory. Um, so I guess I have to discuss that. The first thing I need to say, that, <laughs> as you probably <laughs> guessed, I, I haven't read uh, the paper um, and um, probably you'll see uh, why um, instead <laughs> I have read uh, the comments on the paper um, published by other researchers let me show you um, here's this debate so here's the post um, where this person talks about his problems with geometric unity and which are uh, expressed in more details in um, uh, the paper. This is a response to three hour technical video which Eric Weinstein uh, posted. Uh, it came out before even the main draft. Um, this one was uh, published. Mm -hmm. But the uh, key features of the theory were already presented. So first of all, I have to explain what this theory is, I guess. Um, the idea is the following. Uh, we have our four-dimensional space-time, right? And um, you see at x p four-dimensional manifold. Um, and we are considering the space of matrix on X. Um, at every point, uh, we could choose a metric. Um, as you know, probably the, the rank um, of the, 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 the number of independent components of the metric tensor is uh, 10 in four dimensions. So, we are getting at every point um, of x uh, additional 10 coordinates in this fiber. So we're getting the fiber bundle of all possible uh, metrics. And in total, it's uh, some 14 dimensional uh, space. I guess the idea is somewhat similar to Pinrow's twister description, where instead of metric, we had and complex structure. Mm. So I guess it, I, I, I have a feeling that um, this geometric unity was inspired by some sort of uh, twister setup. Mm. Then um, he notices that if we consider a connection on this fiber bundle, uh, this connection automatically gives us a Riemannian metric on it. And that's crucial for Eric because Riemannian metric allows you to consider spinner bundles. <laughs> we already, I guess, learned that that's like his favorite thing. Um, plus, physically it's motivated by the fact that in the standard model we have all our field of matter described by some spinner bundles, right? That's what he's looking for. Uh, so we have our spinners, right? Um, it's spin 14 uh, bundle uh, associated with, um, yeah, spinner bundle of, yeah, we have spinner bundle of U and we have associated spin 14 um, principal bundle. Now, then he just wants to uh, consider this um, spin 14 bundle as a sub bundle in inside the group of all unit transformation of this complex vector bundle of spinners which is called u so again just forgot the spinners just think about them as vectors there's a matrices acting in them um, that's all and essentially it will become the gauge group of his theory with certain uh, simplification I would say that 
uh, after that he considers some sort of gauge theory on this whole four dimensional space auxiliary space um, and um, w w w he writes down some um, bizarre equations of motion right that is uh, not quite explained in this um, commentary very well um, it starts with you know writing curvature for this connection uh, on this 14 dimensional space uh, but it has some corrections here in terms of what he said called augmented torsion tensor and uh, the problem which these people have uh, with this um, setup is that it involves some sort of she up operator which is this identification um, essentially it comes from identification um, like this one of um, uh, exterior powers of a tangent cotangent uh, space to u we use our 14 dimensional observer u observers like he called it right and um, the um, algebra of matrices uh, of unity transformations of the spinner bundle um, they, they just also happen to have the same dimension though this the dimension of exterior algebra is 2 to the power dimension of space so 2 to the power 14 as a spinner bundle um, has dimension 2 to the power 14 divided by 2 14 half of 14 so 2 to the power 7 you take matrix so it you get again 2 to the power 14 dimensional space um, and if you complexify both you got and define them uh, however uh, their claim is that this step is missing from uh, his um, paper um, they know that we cannot define the shape operator without complexification since in general uh, there is no isomorphism between uh, real ex exterior powers and the algebra of uh, unitary matrices um, the real algebra of the group of unitary matrices this falls from the fact that there is no natural vector space isomorphism between u1 u128 and the real clifford uh, algebra in dimension 14 which is algebra of 128 times 108 real matrices uh, well i guess the dimension still matches right i guess the problem is with the action right they i guess uh, they claim that at the level of the fibers, the representation is given by the conjugation of complex matrices by unitary transformation. That, that, that's most likely will be important for this equation to be uh, a gauge invariant, right? Uh, covariant with respect to the group action. Uh, I guess that's uh, what the claim is. And they said, okay, um, we are left to the conclusion that Weinstein has either failed to mention or not did a complication step or else had made a fundamental error. Uh, if we are charitable and assume the former, then this immediate, immediately raises question, raises problems as a pre quantum classical theory. So, why uh, indeed following 15 by complexifying the space of connections and here is the gauge group? The resulting quantum field theory will either fail to be unitary, quantum properties will not be Hermitian, or else result in Hamiltonian that has any respect of unbounded in both the positive and negative directions. Neither, neither option is tenable. So, yeah, it just says that, okay, if you have complex Hamiltonian, well, how is it physical, right? Look, I don't know. The problem is, um, I don't know what Eric <laughs> is planning to do with these equations. Mm. Maybe for him it's like fundamentally classical theory. I don't know whether he'll calculate some path integrals with it or quantize it somehow and maybe it's in the main paper i don't know i'm not sure 
Um, so I don't know whether this complication step uh, will, you know, undermine the whole idea further. Because I feel like the quantization is not really mentioned. Um, now, uh, they also have problems with Carl anomaly. Yeah, again, it just, if you assume, they're assuming that uh, we're going to quantize the theory in the way that we quantize any other quantum theory, at least say naively, that um, namely in the entire group of internal summation serves as a gauge group um, rather than the usual spin group. A subgroup of the gauge group consists of axial transformation for the gamma security operating in 14 dimensions. Um, uh, yeah, the scene the gauge group also contains gauge connection associated to central one subgroup. This gauge connection induces an abelian chiral anomaly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Never did it in 14 dimensions. Never done this calculation, but probably yeah, it, it might happen. Um, I don't know. Um, haven't checked any of this myself. Mm. And they said it could be fixed if we just would not, you know, um, embed our spin 14 bundle into U128 one, 128 bundle because um, that's what led to this um, additional transformations. But we could not do it because then the, these dimensions wouldn't match and we will not be able to define all these sharp operators mm. for simple dimension reasons. So it seemed like and uh, this step was unavoidable. The step was embedding. Where it is? Oh, I lost it. Yeah, here it is. Um, no, overall, I, I would say was well, still curious. Um, think maybe somebody would be interested to look into it um, I just don't know why why I would do it right um, what it's uh, uh, in what sense is promising for what uh, there's no really quantum theory uh, anyway even if you know all those mistakes are resolved and there is, I don't see like a clear prescription how exactly we gonna gonna go back from this 14 dimensional space to our four dimensional space time. I guess probably we go along the ideas which he had explained in his PhD thesis, where we kind of perform dimensional reduction um, in the end, but. I don't know. I mean, it's probably unfinished work in some sense. Mm. Yeah, and they conclude by saying Freeman Dyson said that it's better to be wrong than to be vague. A good justification for this dictum is that truth often arises from a well discerned error, especially when it's aided by the help of others. Um. Yeah, we hope our response is an encouragement to Weinstein to provide further clarity to his ideas, ideally as a technical paper. Uh, so yeah, and he published this paper and I found a post by Timothy uh, where he comments on it. And he said that um, he didn't quite address these concerns. He said, you see, Jew depends on Shia operator being well defined. Unfortunately, in the few pages dedicated to explaining the Shia operator of what Eric provides is the following. And then he said, you see, uh, the particles of Shia operators are workman like and not of much interest. Uh, the interesting aspect of them is that they all essentially look like contracting over indices in the fashion familiar from Romanian tensor geometry, but with some aspect of conjugation by the gauge group element, living inside the inhomogeneous gauge group. There's no need sigma field of sorts. So I guess it makes me think that indeed he is using some sort of 
uh, non-canonical identification here. Mm. Um, and not giving any new um, conceptual idea. Yeah. Doubters remembers choosing them years ago with representation theory techniques involving high state representation rather than with the more indicial methods represented here with invariant elements phi. Indicial, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure. Maybe he had some method. But then what? He forgot it or what? The advantage was that Bianchi identity was able to pick the best and most appropriate operator in different circumstances. Unfortunately, the author is no longer conversant in that language and has been unable to locate the notes from decades ago that originally picked out the operator of choice to play the role of the swerve here. Uh, the author either hopes to find the original calculation or get back to the point where he can reconstruct this argument based on using the Bianchi identity to guarantee gauge perpendicularity and or use the Bianchi identity to guarantee automatic solution for differential equation in the curvature. Yeah, so I, I guess that Sean Carroll complaint was totally on point when he said this is some sort of dog eat my homework <laughs> type of excuse. Like, well, okay, the, how are you gonna move on forward if this operator is practically not quite well defined? Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know, as I said, like for me, it's not even that important. It's more like, what are I gonna do with this? Uh, why is it uh, relevant for anything? I think like you know, things which I'm working on right now are like more promising than that. So I am kind of reluctant to read the 69 page uh, paper even. Um, I don't know, uh, you could try to change my mind. Um, that's I guess all which I have for today on Geometric Unity. Of course, I agree that it's like incomplete review because I was just commenting on some other person comment, which I haven't even read, like, you know, in full death and che checking all his claims, right? Uh, but I just uh, don't know whether I should spend more time on it.